When I started out on my photography journey, I just thought of Camera Raw as a vehicle to transfer raw files into Photoshop for editing. And to be honest, looking back, that's pretty much all it was useful for. However, over the past few years, the designers behind Camera Raw have been quietly developing and improving the program to a point where the updated 2023 edition featuring artificial intelligence is so good, I now do 90% of my processing in Camera Raw, leaving Photoshop plus a handful of other specialised apps for final tweaking or special effects on my images. As a professional wildlife and wedding photographer, I process thousands of images a month. And this latest 2023 edition of Camera Raw, with the benefits of artificial intelligence, saves me a bunch of time with easy adjustments in just a few seconds per image. In my opinion, Camera Raw has always lived in the shadow of Photoshop and very much underrated. But I'm positive that if more creators were aware of the powerful tools Camera Raw offers, especially with the incredible 2023 update, they'd be surprised at just how much time and effort can be saved. So this is the first in a series of bite-sized tutorials, simplified for any level of creator, demonstrated in real time, step-by-step, -step, one feature at a time, making a collection of how-to tutorials that you can dip into when you have the need for a particular effect on your image. So you might want to hit that subscribe button and make sure notifications are set because this is one series you definitely don't want to miss. Hi, I'm Ken Hatfield. Welcome to my Better Photography channel. In this first episode, I'll be looking at the interface, checking out the features and tools before I start demonstrating each tool one by one in short, bite-sized, easy to follow and easy to remember tutorials. So let's go to my desktop and I'll run through the basics. Okay, so I've opened my desktop here and I've brought up Adobe Camera Raw, the latest version. And what I'm going to do here is, as I explained in the introduction, I'm just going to do a run through of what's available to you, the tools that are shown here and basically what they do. I'm not going to particularly show you exactly how to use them. I just, at this point, want to show you what's going to be the basis for the videos I'm about to produce on each of these different tools here so that you can understand better how to use them. And I think you'll probably find that there's quite a number of people who already already use Camera Raw, either unaware of some of these tools or certainly don't know how to use them. So it could be a useful exercise to subscribe, hit the notification button so you'll get to know when these videos have been uploaded. So this is a general overview. Let's start at the top. Up at the top here, we've got the histogram. The histogram I've explained in greater detail for the camera on a previous video, and I'm going to put a link in the details below for you to be able to go to look at that, should you wish to do so. But these are actually shown as the red, green and blue channel. But this is a snapshot of your exposure. It basically telling you exactly how you've exposed it. And you'll find that it, it covers from the blacks, the shadows, the exposure, that's a general overall exposure, the highlights, and the whites and what you can do here by clicking on any of these panels you can move the exposure you can see what it's doing to the picture you can actually see i'm dragging to the right the blacks to the right that means it's actually brightening the blacks up making it more visible and that's good for kind of bringing out the background a wee bit but you can do it in the shadows you can adjust the entire exposure by clicking and dragging or you can bring the whites at this end all the way down and you can see what that's doing there Basically, with the histogram, what you've got to try and do, if possible, is to try and get so that the lines are not going off to this side, which means where this is hit the edge of the panel here. This is showing where, where the blacks are there, where the really dark area there, where there's no detail to be had. And similarly, on this side, it's trailing off, and this is where the, the white portion. Now, there's nothing gone to pure white there, so you've got detail in all of the white portions of the image. And that basically makes sure that you get a perfectly well-exposed image. Okay, so let's look at the editing tools we've got here. So if we click on edit there, it'll highlight all the different editing tools that are available. And we'll just do a quick run through there to show you what you've got available. First thing first is the basic tool. This allows you to make adjustments to all of these features here. So I can go exposure, contrast, highlights, all the way down, whites, blacks, texture, clarity, dehaze. Again, this will be explained in much more detail on a video that is dedicated just to the basic tool. 
But as you can see, these are all slider tools. Great to experiment with this to see what happens when you make the adjustment with these. Just to see what effect they have until you learn how to use the tool properly. All of those can be changed to make the image the way that you would prefer to have it seen. I always start incidentally when I bring any image in here with auto up here. I press on auto, not always perfect, but quite often gets it quite right. So I start with auto and as you can see all of those sliders have changed to what the camera raw thinks is the perfect setting for this exposure. Well, of course you then can play with it as much as you want. So the more you use it, the more you get used to it and the more you realise how easy it is to actually use these functions to completely change your image from a so-so image to a good image. To close that you just go back up to the tab there, click on the little V there and it will close that up and you can go into the next one which is your curves. Curves very much the same as in Photoshop and Lightroom, basically bottom left hand side of the box is the shadows and up to the top which are your highlights and you can actually grab a point on that line and create a curve and again you can see what is happening there it's actually reducing or increasing the light on the image you can actually choose multiple spots up this line which i will come to when we come to do the video tutorial on how to use curves but you can also adjust the curves on the red green and blue channel all of which are useful for getting a perfect exposure and of course you can also use the highlights down here all of this will help you to learn where to place the spot on the curve line to get exactly what you want the next are the details uh, this basically allows you to do sharpening noise reduction and color noise reduction this is all something you can do if you find that the image is not quite sharp you can then make an adjustment here i personally use another program to do this type of adjustment i use topaz range of tools and i put a link below to the video i actually demonstrate topaz and it's amazing capacity to uh, sharpen and remove noise but you can use it here if you wish and it's another slider which you can slide backwards and forwards just to make any adjustment that you need to sharpen it up a little bit or remove color noise so let's close that one up and then we go to the color mixer all of these tools are there to assist you either to make something creative with your image or to make an image that you feel hasn't quite hit the mark for what you're intending to do color mixer will allow you to change within the image itself and again this is something we will go into in much greater detail elsewhere but you can use these and you can see some of these are very very subtle but sometimes to get that extra one percent you have to make an effort and you do it on hue saturation and luminance so hue is more like the tone the saturation is the depth of color itself and luminance is the brightness again this is something for a much longer video that's another tool that you can use which will make a difference to give you that extra one or two percent needed to perfect your image so let's come out of there and we look at color grading this is another way of changing the color balance in your photograph this again takes a little bit more of explanation now but you can do it on the mid-tones the shadows and the highlights you can use this tool to do some very dramatic things if you so wish you can change the, the colors and the tones and this tool takes a little bit of getting used to but, but it can make a difference to your image in a different way to other tools in camera raw and if you now look at the optics now optics is something that you can use if you have any fringing on your image I bring an image now that shows you exactly what fringing is. Chromatic aberrations you can see here is a fringe, it's called fringing as well. It's a fringe of colour along the outline edge of an image. And this uses a very simple method. So you simply take the dropper tool across there, you place it onto the area where you've got the fringing, you simply click there and the fringing is gone. Super little tool that, very, very useful. We're now going to look at geometry. So this is all about angles. If your building isn't sitting straight, if it's leaning away as in this image here, you can use this tool to be able to make either manual or automatic. There's some automatic ones here you can use and uh, will give you an opportunity to see if you can straighten it up. One or two of them are rather extreme, but it's possibly best to use this, the manual transformations here. And on this here, you can actually move around and use different angles and aspects just to try and get your angle straightened up again something that we can look at in a video dedicated to just this feature but very very useful back to our original image now we go to effects this is purely to add grain to the image if you wish probably best to use that on black and white but then also you can uh, add a vignette 
uh, switch it along to the left hand side and it puts a nice black vignette in and switch it across to the right and it'll put a white vignette. I use that a lot on my wedding photography for when really showing kind of detailed shots if I want to centralise the image on a bouquet of flowers or the wedding rings or the shoes or whatever. It's nice to put a vignette on to focus the attention on the subject in the centre of the image. The last one here is calibration. And calibration is something that you can actually use to change the tint using the red, green and blue channels. Um, you can change the tint on the image and you can also change the saturation. And this is something again you can play with till your heart's content just to, to see what effect this can have on your image. And again it's one of those teal tools basically where you just need kind of 10-15 minutes to play with it just to see how each of these sliders affect the image and once that gets fixed in your mind you then you know you can come back to it and do exactly what you want to do all of these tools are there for a purpose that all can do something to your image that will make it just either a little bit different or make it better now let's take a look at this toolbar to the far right hand side. So this tool at the top here basically is a reset and, uh, to get you back to your editing tools. So if you come out of the editing and go to something like a crop or a blemish remover, if you want to go back to your tools again, you just click on that. Obviously we all know what this is, this is your crop tool again. Everyone knows how to use this and uh, you can actually resize, crop, remove. You also use it to create an angle. And you, know, you can flip, rotate, and it's again another useful tool which you can either use here or wait until you go into Photoshop and do it then. The next tool here is the spot removal tool. Uh, again, it's in Photoshop. Useful sometimes to do it here perhaps, but you can actually make that go a little smaller and you can just use that to remove any blemishes that you see on the skin. may take more than one click to get rid of it. And as you can see, that does a pretty good job there. The next tool down is one of my all-time favourites and brand new in the latest update that came last year, I think in September, October. And this is the masking tool. And this is where the artificial intelligence steps in and it is absolutely amazing. And this is a tool I'm so excited about. Brand new for 2023. Well, it was developed in 2022, late 2022. And as you can see, it's already sought out the three different people in the image. And you can actually apply a mask individually to each person or collect them together and mask all three together. You can do this by subject, you can do by sky if there's a sky, or by background. And it is so intuitive, it is extraordinary. And one of the very first tutorials I'm going to be doing is to show you how to get the most out of this because there is absolutely loads of things you can do with this, not with just with you know wedding photos like this, but any photograph where you want to make a change to the background or you want to do something to individuals in the image then this is the tool that's going to really make that happen for you. Really excited about that. Can't wait to do a video. As I say, if you press the subscribe button and uh, the notification button, you get to know exactly when this particular video was posted. And if you don't watch any other video in this series, I urge you to look at this one because this is an extraordinarily powerful tool. Next is the red eye removal tool. This is really, really simple because 99% of the time you just touch auto, it finds the red eyes and takes them out. If not, you can actually use these tools to hone in and take the cursor across and click to remove the red eye from the, uh, the subject. Then we come to the presets. Camera Raw very kindly give you a number of these presets to play with. There's different tones, different settings, all preset. And if you like one of those, you can remember what it is and use it on other images. You can also do your own image uh, processing. Now, this is really useful for someone like me who may do 30 images of family groupings in my wedding photography. And then I can do a preset on here, get the first image just the way I like it, and then actually name it and keep it amongst these presets for it to be used on the other images. Saves me a whole lot of time processing each image one at a time. You can either use the presets that are, uh, are given to you here or you can in fact have your own presets set in here for when you take images that are similar to other images in your portfolio. And the next tool is snapshots. 
Snapshots basically is a tool where as you're going along making your adjustments you can come across the snapshots and just take a snapshot of your settings right then and there and the camera roll will remember that and you can go back at any time to that point of your editing and start again remove stuff put stuff back in again so it's kind of like a, a go back tool but with numerous snapshots that you want to keep at certain time in your uh, processing so if we come down to the bottom left hand side you actually see the size of the image here this is 32 percent scale of the image you can zoom here using this tool here up to 100 percent it's obviously shown in full screen at about 32 33 percent so we use that we've then got a tool here which actually if you've got multiple images open at the same time which you can do in camera raw you can open several images at the same time this will allow you to have a thumbnail bar across here so you can cut from one image to the next this is a sorting tool by the capture date, the file name. Again, if you're using multiple images, this will allow you to choose which ones that you want to work on. And this one actually will show you how to sort by star rating, the color label. And, and these are the ratings here. And you can just press on a star. Now this is useful for sorting. Again, if you're going through images and you want to decide which to keep and which to dispose of, which are your best, which are your middle ones, which are the ones to, to actually delete. So you can give it a star rating here. Then at a later date, you can uh, bring all the one stars together and delete them. You can bring the three stars and put them as your mid range, and then your top stars you can have as five stars if you should wish to do so. Down here to the right, we've got a couple of tools here which are very useful but little known. And this is where you can actually split the image and see the before and after. When you're making an adjustment, you can actually look to see how much you've changed the image. So one of the uh, images will show you what you're doing now, and the other one will actually show you where you've come from and that's extremely useful and you can toggle back and forwards to have the effect on either side and you can also use this split screen effect here where you can see on the same image you can see the effect by splitting the image in two and doing the effect on one side of the image and the original on the other all useful for keeping track of your changes and your alterations so that you don't go too far and you can always go back over and actually refine your edit to make sure that it's exactly as you'd like it and then we come across to the far right and if your image is just kind of small in the frame you can use a zoom tool and that zoom tool will actually enlarge it for you and it will fill the frame the hand tool basically the same as in photoshop and lightroom it simply allows you to move the image uh, around which is useful when you're actually zooming in and then uh, the dropper tool this is good because let's just say i wanted to put a border on here but i wanted the border to match part of the image so let's say we wanted a green border i can take this sample tool and i can click on anywhere on this or anywhere on the image itself but i'm going to do it on the green here and what it'll do then it'll bring up the color profile so you can match that when you come to do the frame when you select a color for your frame you can use that rgb selection to make sure that the frame matches exactly and you can put that anywhere on the image and it'll bring up the rgb for any one of them and then we have a grid tool and as you can see this allows you to put a grid over your image useful if you've got buildings any structures that need straightening up horizons whatever you can change the grid size up here and you can also change the opacity of the grid so that you can actually edit without the grid getting in the way finally there's three controls at the bottom very simple cancel means that you cancel everything that you've done there and your file will be returned back into bridge or wherever you brought it from unchanged done means that it will be saved as edited and sent back to where this original source was and then open means that uh, the changes will be saved and the image will be sent across to either photoshop or lightroom for further editing so that's a basic rundown of the features in Camera Raw 2023. In each of the upcoming episodes, I'll be featuring just one tool and drilling down in depth, demonstrating in real time how to get the best out of Camera Raw 2023. See you next time on the Better Photography Channel.